Hello everybody, how's it going? Welcome to our continued coverage of Summer Game Fest. This is the Devolver Conference. Uh, in the past, this conference has been weird, wacky, and highly entertaining. They've done some very, very fun stuff in this conference. Uh, I'm pretty sure they killed somebody on stage one year. Uh, joining me again is JT. How's it going? Hey, good. But yeah, uh, doing good, doing good. yeah. Devolver is one group that, over the last couple of years in particular, they've really blown up. They've had some like really, really good games. So, we'll see what they got. I just want to know the date for Plucky Square. All right, here we go. When people ask me what I like to do with my free time, I tell them that these days, I'm afraid I really don't have any free time. My life is pretty much scheduled down to the minute. Okay, I don't have a job per se, and I'm not in a relationship right now, but I do have my interests. Does anybody actually do that? Stick their face in I a... guess you could say I'm passionate. Maybe even a little obsessive about Devolver video games. When I think about the many enjoyable hours I've spent playing my games, I say to myself, what a wonderful world it is we live in. And I say thank you. Thank you to all those who have made my life so damn fun. That's why today is so important to me. Today is a special day. Today is Volvi's birthday. A chance for me to show my appreciation for somebody who has given me so much call over the, the years. <laughs> nice. Take Call to the Lamb, for example, a roguelike video game developed by indie studio Massive Monster and published by Devolver Digital. The game was released on the 11th of August, 2022, and has sold over 4 million copies to date. The game follows a lamb who was saved from death by a godlike stranger named the one who waits, and must repay the debt by creating a loyal following in its name. It receives three nominations at the one who saved the cat. Uh oh. Is this called the lamb too? Or a DLC? This game was really good. Yeah. The Twitch interaction was great. And they've made it even better, too. Oh, wait, are they doing a co op? Wait. Yeah, are they doing like a co op? Oh, local co op. Unholy Alliance. Nice. It's no use, guys. Fish Pig and the Warlocks have trapped us in. That's Madman. He won't stop until he has turned everything into toxic waste. Yes, Robotia. And if my calculations are correct, People forget that putting on a good party can be a lot of work. It's a lot of pressure. Everyone is relying on you as the host to get things right. You don't want to humiliate yourself, do you? Not in front of him. But we thought 
thought you were executed by the head of state. No, I was not. Now pass me that onion. I'm gonna need a snack if we're gonna take on the The Crush House is crushing it as the country's number one reality show. And things are heating up this week. The insatiable fans, beloved sponsors, and savvy network execs won't believe what's in store for our cast of potential lovers and haters. Monday. Sees the tension between Priscilla and B finally boil over into an explosive confrontation. Into a steamy moment by the pool. Tuesday is a bit more chill in the house as Io brings the cast together with a bopping saxophone So they basically took like Big Brother and made it into Charlie a video game? brings the cast together with a bopping <laughs> saxophone performance. Wednesday. Tune in Wednesday for the real fireworks when Charlie and Milo, Beer and Alex sneak off for a little moment of self-reflection. For a little romantic time in the garden. For a wild fist fight. And by the end of the week, crowd favorite Emil, Priscilla, finally lets all their love and a little lust run free. Finally takes matters into their own hands. Finally goes down the success line. I don't know what's happening. Anything like it right. ever again. This game's gonna be dark. But a birthday isn't just about looking backwards. It's about considering the future. Sure, we've had some great times over the years, but who's to say the next years won't be even better? I know Volvi has so much more to offer us. Who knows what he'll There's do next? Squire. Perhaps something truly unexpected. Maybe even a new genre. A rogue fu city builder. I made that up myself, but I like it. Something fast-paced, inspired by martial arts movies, set within the confines of a vast yet claustrophobic city dominated by vicious gangs. Each run is different depending on which of these crime syndicates you take down first. Maybe even crafted by the talented Dead Cells designer Sebastian Bernard. Wow, fantastic. Now that's the kind of game I would play. Now that's the kind of game I would play. It sounds like an interesting concept for a game. Is it actually a real game? It is, yeah. Now that's the kind of game I would play. It has to be. I wish it was using a slightly different pixel art style. It's Tenjitsu. I'll yeah. write that one down. Pretty good. Of course, video games are not for everyone. Some people prefer to spend their time outside exploring the natural world or watching their team win the big trophy. Yay. 
And to them, I say whatever works for you. We all have our passions. And if you're going to be passionate about something, then why not go all in? And hey, if you don't care about anything passionately, well then I feel sorry for you. I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's important to be true to who you are. That might sound easy, but a lot of people are just too afraid, too scared of being judged, to look in the mirror and say, yes. He's gonna cosplay as a this blonde guy. This is who I am. I'm not a robot. Talos Principle 2 is a puzzle adventure video game developed by Crow Team and published by Devolver Digital. A sequel to the Talos Principle, 2014. The game was released in November 2023 to critical acclaim. The sequel builds on the first game's origin story of robot kind by exploring the newly emerged robotic civilization through the newborn eyes of 1K. It has been described as thoughtful, heartfelt, and deeply moving. I just wish there was more. Road to Elysium is a three-part coda that allows you to dive deeper into the world of the Talos Principle 2 and put your puzzle-solving skills to the test. In Orpheus Ascending, you return as one Anybody kid in chat and enter Cerevi's mind series? to retrieve the shattered fragments of her personality. Set in a gorgeous environment inspired by ancient Egypt, this expansion challenges you to solve puzzles unconventionally, giving Cerebi a second chance at life. Step into the shoes of Yakut and visit the Isle of the Blessed. Challenge yourself with a wide variety of never-before-seen puzzles using familiar tools, culminating in the Hexahedron, a large, continuous puzzle cluster set in a mysterious crooked tower. Into the Abyss takes you on a journey through a dream world, full of the most challenging puzzles yet, taking place on a series of floating islands and shattered dreams. Road to Elysium continues the evolution of the robot world, providing you with a new perspective through a series of thought-provoking new stories. It's really cool. So why are the police coming to talk to this guy? Did he get mad at Colby? Good evening, sir. I uh, hope I'm not interrupting anything important. No. no. We've had some complaints about some noise. One of your neighbors has described hearing strange sounds. <laughs> strange sounds? <laughs> uh, that would be my TV set. I, I like to keep my shows cranked. Uh, yeah, I like to get lost in, in the experience. Okay, maybe in future, keep your TV and any other devices at a reasonable volume. I'm sure I don't need to remind you of the law against noise pollution. I don't want to have to waste any more police. So does he have something locked in his attic or something? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh. Ah! Oh, this game we've seen. I immediately recognize. Yeah. Probably get a release date for it, I imagine. Or maybe it's a DLC, maybe it's already out.
there we go. We got a delay. Are you okay, sir? Yeah. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Yeah, you know what? Uh, first thing tomorrow, I'm, I'm going to go around to everyone in the area. I'm going to make things right. Uh, a formal apology and a card? <laughs> I don't think that's necessary, sir. Just keep the noise down. Yeah, I'm going to switch it off. Uh, a, a day without TV would probably do me a world of good. <laughs> Uh-oh. Why is this uh, set okay, in the UK? So, uh, thank you, officer. Because you UK people are Where crazy. Where the TV, then? Hmm? Oh, um, I, I, I have a, a few just dotted around the place. Yeah, you know, like I said, I, I like to uh, immerse myself in the experience. So I think I might need to pop in, take a look around the place, if that's okay. Well, uh, I, I'm expecting uh, some guests now, so um, perhaps another time would be more uh, appropriate. Sir, you need to step aside now. Oh, Sir, oh, step oh aside. that sound! That, that's, a, that's an old plumbing issue. Receiving it's really, it's a matter for the landlord, so uh, I could just give him a call and he can fix it. Hello, police. Does he actually? Does he have like the? Hello. The mask got like locked up yeah, or something. Fully. Yeah. My resting heart rate is precisely 65 beats per minute. Rapid elevation is often attributed to stress. My heart. My heart machine is an American independent video game development studio founded by Alex Preston. The studio is best known for developing Hyper Light Drifter 2016 and Solar Ash 2021. But rumors suggest that they may have another project on the way. It may or may not feature a rich interconnected world built to be approached in many ways, non-linear, with emphasis on clear choice for where to go next. This purely hypothetical game's narrative balances the bleak reality of the characters with absurdity and humor. God help me. Wait, haven't we seen this one in the last few days? It looks very familiar. Because I remember an action platform Metroidvania style game where the character was on like st stilt legs like this. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember, remember that name now. Like it, all of his, this is like in his mind. He's gonna be like in the back of the cop car or something. Party, 
that's it. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. Generally, their stuff is pretty short. Fish pig and the warlocks have trapped us in. That madman. He won't stop until he has turned everything into toxic waste. Yes, Robotia. And if my calculations are correct, Fish Pig's toxic slime will reach the city center in just under two hours. Heck, it could even reach the banking sector. Grumpfish, no. Grumpfish, anger. But there must be a way. We can't just give up. We just need... We just need... <laughs> How about a helping hand? Bobby? But we thought you were executed by the head of state. No, I was not. Now pass me that onion. I'm gonna need a snack if we're gonna take on Fish Pig. And we need to get back to Buzzbrick before Fish Pig, the Warlock King, turns all the money in Buzzbrick into slime! <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you, Mr. Pennyworth, but the economy is looking a little unstable. No, no, you can't do that. Don't turn all the money into toxic slime. We <laughs> need all that. You can't stop me from doing it, Mr. Banker. Well, you might ruin the money, but you can't break the spirit of the bankers. You don't get it, do you? <laughs> Nobody can stop me now. Not even your precious... Bobby! What? what? No! Sorry we're late to the party, Fish Pig, but we didn't want to turn up empty-handed. <laughs> well, I guess we don't have to worry about Fish Pig anymore. I'm looking forward to just hanging out with my buddies. Who's up for a pizza at mine? I hypothesize a ham and pineapple slice or two. Sorry, friends, but I gotta get going. Huh? But Volvi... I've got to get back to the Vol dimension, Volvinia. I've got a family to look after. And besides, pizza pie is greasy and gives me shit diarrhea. <laughs> He's right, guys. No pizza tonight. Oh Eating healthy is important. Okay. That's a uh, that's a pretty classic Devolver uh, conference. Yeah. Uh, I thought. It, see, I know last year they did something with the character, so I think this year was a continuation of the story from last year. And so my guess would be is next year they'll continue the story of this one. That's generally what they've done in the past. Um. So yeah, they only showed like what four games or five games or something like that. The yeah, only, not many. The only one I wrote down was uh, Tenjitsu, if I'm saying the name correctly. And then, yeah, I think it was a DLC for Call to the Lamb, and yeah, a hap was it Happy Feet or Bigfoot or Anger Angerfoot? Angerfoot, yeah. Angerfoot. And then, July July 11th on uh, this year for the release date on that. Yeah. So. Yeah, if you guys want like a, a good laugh, uh, I would go and watch the, I think it was the 20, the, the 2022 and 2021 Devolver conferences were like really, really funny. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I don't know. Any other thoughts on what they showed, I guess? Um, not really. Yeah. Thank you. No, it was just kind of short and sweet. I mean, the presentation of what they do every year is like really impressive. Like if you take a look at like all the scenes and sets and everything that they did for this, it was like very high budget, you know? Right. Yeah. But it's like just a very weird presentation every year. It's very devolver. <laughs> yeah. About this guy that's obsessed with the mascot and I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, so we still don't know if that was real or not. Yeah. Who knows? Might have to wait a full year to find out. Yep. Um, yeah. For those who are watching on YouTube, we'll uh, wrap up the VOD right there. So uh, thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.